G'day cunts. Hope you're all just tickety boo. We're getting to Isaac Butterfield today, specifically his video titled, Is It Okay To Be White? Question mark. Now Butts, alleged Facebook comedian and man standing in front of cashed up Bogan's wet dream, put this out a few months back. Probably would have been a good idea to be doing this video back then, but I've broken the left wing covenant by having a job, so I do what I can. Anyway, still pretty relevant in my mind, perhaps even more so given recent events. To respond though, I've tried to separate Butts' 17 minute long rant down into two main sections. This was not easy. As with many videos of this type, the structure is like a shotgun blast of bad ideas to the face. Butts jumps from point to point and back again in a way that almost seems designed to make responding harder. To be honest, I was tempted to just go point for point on this one. That though would have meant I had something to say every 10 goddamn seconds, which isn't much of an exaggeration to be frank. But yeah, two main parts. The first, discussing the it's okay to be white bill, which is what has Buddy so worked up. And the second, we'll be looking more specifically at Butts' poor understanding of racism, race politics, that whole thing. So, first then, the it's okay to be white bill. I'll let Butts himself describe it for you in a tick, but for context, because context matters, I'll explain who Pauline Hansen is for those overseas who don't know. Now, she's the one who brought this bill to the Senate. She used to run a fish and chip shop, and she's fucking awful. The illustrious Miss H was first elected in 1996, originally running for the local Conservative Party, the Liberals. However, even this pack of thundercunts disendorsed her after a speech in which she described how she believed Australia was in danger of being overrun by Asians. The disendorsement didn't count for much though, because she was still on the ballot come election time, and she fucking won. Soon after, she formed her own party, One Nation, which was and is synonymous with racist horseshit in mainstream political Australia. She lost her seat in 1998, though, and spent some time in jail before getting her electoral fraud charges overturned. She then went on Dancing with the Stars just prior to getting elected to the Senate in 2016. Thanks for that one, Channel 7. This time, though, with the more politically expedient target of Muslims. Now again, a sitting representative of Queensland, she did some stuff like calling for a ban on Muslims getting to immigrate here, she wore a niqab into the Senate, which was really weird, and then later brought up the bill in question. Now it's worth mentioning too that during her alleged career she's had a few other relevant bits and bobs to say, including pushing the idea that Anglo-Australia was earmarked for destruction, and also the idea that Indigenous Australians ate their children. She's just a lovely, lovely bird. Anyway, let's listen to Butts explain the controversy at hand and some of his concerns. Note that there's a section where Butts himself clicked a segment from local <coughs> news show, The Project, in the bit that I clipped from him. So don't get confused by that. Roll tape. Now the motion that the Australian Senator put forward was voted down, but it was a very close vote, 32 to 28. But then after that, the Australian government went all over the Australian media apologising saying that, no, 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 this was an administrative error, this did not happen, but it did. What does that mean? What are you trying to say? Are you saying it's not okay to be white? Mixed messages, ladies and gentlemen. Now, many people have pointed to the it's okay to be white phrase and connected that with the Ku Klux Klan. Now, okay, you can do that if you like, but you could also connect it to its main origin, which is from 4chan. 4chan is a website that I've never visited and from all reports I should never visit. Apparently it's just a troll. But what does it say when your elected representatives get on the TV and start saying, no, 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 we didn't mean to say it was okay to be white. Craig, here's a, a, a phrase I'd never thought I'd have to say on this show. Last night your mm -hmm. government voted in support of neo-Nazi ideology in the Australian mm -hmm. Senate. Can you explain that? Okay, well, you can spin it like that, Pete, if you really want to, or you could look at the actual vote that they were voting upon, acknowledging a rise in anti-white racism and being white not being a bad thing. Nothing overly neo-Nazi there, and two things that perhaps we could all agree, regardless of your skin colour and background, are okay. You then had the Attorney General afterwards tweeting about the fact that the government had voted in support of this anti-racism measure. So clearly... The government knew what it was voting on. This well, well, was a deliberate vote. This was not a, yeah. we meant to say no and we said yes instead. It's not that. He's proud of the fact that you said yes and then went and tweeted about it. Now, let's forget about the context of this situation and have a look at that tweet directly. That person who was high in the government is suggesting that they deplore racism of any kind. And Waleed is upset about that. What the f***? Okay, so the first thing I gotta point out is that that's not what Waleed said. 
I ain't a huge fan of Waleed by any stretch, but the guy was pointing out that the government knew the bill was racist because they're tweeting about how it was defeated and that that's a good thing. Other dude is there to defend the government re the fact that the vote was as close as it was when it shouldn't have been. Anyway, that's details. I want to focus on the bill itself and why it was indeed a very racist proposal, despite Butts' assertions to the contrary, especially in regards to the words, it's okay to be white. Let's look at the bill. Looking at part B first, which reads, as you can see, it's okay to be white. Now considered in isolation, if we ignored context, etc, etc, of course, these words would be fine. The trouble is, as with so many talking points from right-wingers, and I guess well-meaning centrists and liberals as well, is that, as I said, context matters. The reason that the phrase, it's okay to be white, is an issue is because of ideas like those presented in part A the apparent rise of anti-white racism and attacks on Western civilization. Now, this is just not a thing that's real and has not been real during any relevant history. I'll be making that case properly in the next section, but for now, we'll take it as a given so I can explain how and why it's okay to be white in this context is indeed racism. The idea of attacks on or other threats to the white population in a country where whites dominate or similar is hardly a new concept. Really, it's the hallmark of any white supremacist trying to rally those that they currently see as belonging to their ever-changing idea of the white race. Lots of examples of this exist. Some have been expressed in easily accessible cartoons even, like this one, or this one, or even this one. Oh, and there's also that guy. And yeah, this is why modern white supremacists like Lawrence Southern, David Duke, and other assorted fash took to the phrase, it's okay to be white, so readily. The phrase fits very neatly within their worldview. The idea that it was ever seriously suggested within our societies that it wasn't okay to be white, while false, is essentially the same as saying that there is an attack on white people. See guys, you can just about hear them shouting, they're mad at you for just existing. Also, protect the white babies. And it's worth saying too, I reckon the so-called 4chan trolls, whether they'd admit it to others or themselves or not, probably knew this on some level when they designed this so-called prank. The idea behind it's okay to be white was stated to be, in part, to show that an innocuous phrase could ignite pushback from the media. The idea being that the media, despite being mostly made up of white folks, is indeed against white people. And in finding issue with the phrase, the media would out themselves. Now this is dumb, and kind of proves this was all about race all along, but the point I'm driving at is that it makes more sense that they chose this phrase because on some level they knew it wasn't innocuous and that it was and is loaded with meaning, given modern history. It's the same as statements like white pride. The reason this phrase is a problem has nothing to do with any concept of being white being inherently bad. It's because other groups have had to struggle for their recognition, their place in our society and their pride. In fact, they often still do. And phrases like white pride seek to erase that struggle. It's okay to be white does the same thing. Really, though I doubt there was any chance that Duke etc. wouldn't have jumped on the phrase like a dingo on a baby. Even if they hadn't, it would still be fucked up all on its own. And not because white people are bad or it's not okay to be white. It's the suggestion that it now or ever was not okay to be white that people are taking issue with. Still, having said all that, I've little doubt that people won't continue attacking that straw man. So, I guess, have fun. On to section two then, Butts' poor understanding of racism, race politics, that whole thing. Now, Buttsy believes that anti-white racism is a thing, a thing that matters and a thing that's on the rise. He makes his case using a few different ideas, so let's have a gander. How dare you say that, Paul Lane? Of course it's okay to be white. It's always been okay to be white. No white person has ever felt discriminated against. And, and I, for one, completely agree. There is absolutely no example of discrimination at all against people who currently have white skin or come from a Caucasian background or are pale or happen to be, you know, whitey in a little sort of a way. You know, that type of thing. Definitely no discrimination at all, except for fucking shit tons of examples. All right, the thing you focused on longest there was that Vice article. Now that's a pretty clickbaity title, sure, way to take the bait, Snowflake, but the actual article is about how non-white folks felt the need to travel out of the States due to those white people who are racially inclined and getting more open with their racism after the Trump election. Given that hate crimes went up the very day after the election of that very stable genius, 
going on a break from all that seems pretty reasonable. At most, this is kind of a not all white people thing, which is something that has always left me kind of perplexed. The statement, humans are cruel to animals, for example, is pretty true. I'm yet to see a vegan respond to that by yelling, not all humans, though. That is something I would pay good money to see, by the way. But I always wonder why white people, and men for that matter, seem to be so sensitive to need that qualifier. Hashtag not all men are this sensitive. These tweets, though, many don't even seem that bad, really, if at all. Some are just highlighting that white folks have privilege. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised this was all he could find. There's one there about victims of terrorism deserving it. Now that's fucked up. No excusing that. Not that I'd have a desire to anyway, of course. The rest, though, don't really bother me, and I guess that's kind of his point. While I won't accept these as any proof that anti-white racism is an issue in the general sense, or is on the rise, you'd need data to show that, I will accept that if some of these tweets were about black people, I would be pissed, as would be many others. The thing is, though, there's a very good reason to take the mockery and even denouncement of white people differently. I'm going to detail a few of these now with some examples of relevant journals, because, yeah, science, bitch. I'll try and be brief here, but the overall point I want you to take away from this is racism, to use the colloquial or traditional definition, because I know that's what Butts and fans will be thinking of, starts to matter a lot more when you consider things like the political structures that favour one group over another, or the comparative frequency of racial abuse, or its mainstream support, that sort of thing. Makes sense? Sure. But let's get into the proof. First journal. This one talks about how racism can be present in many different areas of a person's life. So it can be peer-to-peer, -peer, it can be institutional, etc, etc. As well, it notes that the data shows that these realities have an impact on people's lives and their health. All well and good. This next one, however, talks about how the effects of racial discrimination are cumulative. That is, the more often you experience it, the worse the effects get. Indeed, there's a lot of info on the effects of racism on items like the mental health of, say, Indigenous Australians. It's really, really bad. Now, if we combine all that with the conclusions from this Victorian government report into discrimination, which found in addition to other conclusions that minorities faced way more race-based discrimination than white Australians, including a third of Indigenous people surveyed reporting experiencing discrimination at work, you know, that place where everyone is supposed to be on their best behaviour, and other examples like the text Unveiling Whiteness in the 21st Century, which concluded that there was no empirical case for the discrimination of white people, well, it's a pretty clear picture. If white people experience discrimination, it's as rare as a virgin at a BNS ball. Moreover, without the impacts of shit like poor access to healthcare, the likelihood of being poor, fucking loads of other shit, it just doesn't register. The impacts of any racial discrimination on white folks just isn't established. If it ever is, I'll start caring. Until then, I'll invite you all to take your teaspoon of cement and harden the fuck up. Cause you're just not doing it that tough. Now, I can just about hear folks screaming at their screens about some examples of what they will perceive as racism. Examples like this one provided by Butts. And believe it or not, the comedy industry in Australia is exactly the same. In Australia right now, in the comedy scene, there are way too many straight white men, apparently. And that means for comedy owners, for people who are putting comedy on TV, they need to put more people that don't look like me in those places. And that's all well and good. But what about me? I'm a white person. I'm a straight white male. Why does my skin colour, my sexual preference and my gender mean that I can't get those positions? So of course, no one is saying you can't get on TV by virtue of being a straight white dude, dude. What they're doing is acknowledging that you've already had a leg up or a series of legs up. So let's bring up people from other demographics who haven't. This affirmative action style shit isn't excluding you. It's an attempt to make sure it includes everyone. Honestly, I reckon if you're good at comedy, you'll get on the telly. Huh. Anyway, there was one more bit where he's tried to establish his anti-white racism case. Yay, let's do it. Can we all just agree that Black Lives Matter isn't the opposite of All Lives Matter? Black Lives just matter. Well, there is when people in that particular movement are telling white people that they should die. <laughs> Bit of a script error there, but that's okay. We know what he meant. And, well, okay then. If a popular movement like BLM believes that white people should die, yeah, okay, you've got a point. Took you a while, but you got one. Oh, except that doesn't appear to be true.
Yeah, the only thing I could find that was kind of in this vein from anyone reputable was this Snopes article about how BLM leaders didn't actually demand white people give up their homes. Because of course they fucking didn't. The only specific references to BLM or even associated individuals that I could find talking about killing white people came from unsourced right-wing propaganda sites like this one. And yeah, if this is a convincing article to you, I can't help you. So yeah, Butsy has not done a great job of establishing his case here, I'm afraid. The evidence just doesn't agree with you, mate. Moving on then, let's see what else he's got for us on racism. Well, here's Butts responding to the thoughts of a young fella talking about what he thinks when he hears the word white. Not understanding. They don't acknowledge what has happened in the past. They don't try to understand as well. They just push it off and say that it's in the past. What happened in the past, particularly in Australia, was absolutely bullshit. Like, white people came over here and just treated the Aboriginal people like shit, like animals, and that's not okay. That's a disgusting thing. It was disgraceful. A horrible, horrible part of Australian history. What the fuck do we do about it now? I don't know. As I said before, I didn't do any of that. I love people who, for who they are, not what they look like. What do you think about that part? Because that's a big point of contention in Australia. What do you think about that part? What can we do to make things better? Like, is there a point where we just move on past it? Or does this perpetually go on forever? I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't have a smart ass answer to that. Or I don't have something comical to say about that. That's something that I have wrestled with within my own... Wrestled? It's something I've wrestled with within my own mind. Because I want to come up with an answer, but I don't have one. That kid is the shit. Good on him. But look, credit where it's due, Butts is doing one of the things mentioned by the kid that white folks tend to not do, and that is acknowledge the past. Good start. However, Butts is also again dropping the footy, because like the kid said, Whitey often doesn't try to understand or say things are just in the past. You know, to answer your question, Buttsy, when does it end? Probably when we get to parody, I'd say. You know, when there's no longer things like a 10-year life expectancy gap for Indigenous Australians compared to the rest of us, for example. You're ignoring what's probably the biggest issue here, Butts. The fact that this sort of thing is still very real and very present for a lot of people. Here's a post that I think was originally put up by the Facebook page Young, Black and Deadly, which kind of makes my case. Like you said, you weren't directly involved in the invasion, but you continue to benefit from it. Now, in terms of a solution, well, it of course won't be any one thing, but there are things even Butsy can and should do right now. For example, acknowledging the current circumstances, or not pushing back against attempts to level the playing field between race groups by calling these attempts anti-white racism. Because that's the other thing you find people are mad at you for, mate. Not only is the continuing struggle something you're willing to forego, you're also fighting tooth and nail against efforts to change that. Not cool, bud. Now, there's plenty else that could be done in terms of solutions. Things that don't involve Butsy, which I'm sure we'll be stoked to hear about. The main one I want to talk about, though, is Indigenous self-determination. And that's something that should be at the forefront of this Let's Call It A Chat. You know, the one thing white folks still don't seem to want to try much is listening to the Indigenous people themselves. But getting into that much more is probably leaving my lane, so I'll shut the fuck up about that. One last little bit to wrap up. Here's Butts with his suggestion on how people should deal with experiencing racism. I hope you find that out. And if you find out that they are pieces of shit and they are racist, then tell them to get fucked. Because they're cockheads and they don't deserve your time and they don't deserve your worry. Fuck them. Now that's hilarious. Really, Butts isn't even a victim of racism. But what he reckons he's going through is enough for him to spend time on making a video. If he can't simply tell people to go and get fucked, what should anyone else be expected to? Honestly, like, shit, if only it was that fucking simple. That'll do for today. Thoughts, comments and corrections from the well-intentioned welcome? See you in the next one. And remember, Australians, you live on stolen land.